Alyssa started playing soccer uh, when she was five years old. Her first game, she scored eight or nine goals. I pulled her aside at the end of the second game and I said to her, I want you to be there for your team, but I don't want you to score any more goals after five. And that's what she did. A normal game day routine for the OPDL starts the day before the game. I will make sure that she has a water bottle by the door. When she comes home from school, I need to make sure she rests. The day of the game, she wakes up early usually. Make sure she has a healthy breakfast. We get her bag out for her. OPDL affects our normal routine. I have to make sure that we put aside four times a week for soccer. I need to, as a mom, make sure she's healthy for every practice. I need to make sure she's prepared. We travel um, sometimes up to an hour, up to five hours, depending on the game day. You're really tied up the whole weekend. And, you know, even just trying to get regular housework, really schedule it around your soccer schedule. And, you know, like a 12 o'clock game in Vaughan, for instance, is basically a, a whole day. It affects me a lot because I work 50 hours a week and I finish at 5 and she has to leave the house at 5.30. So it leaves me half an hour, three times a week, to cook a meal, clean up a meal, eat the meal, and be out the door. It really affects their work too because let's say we had like, like this week we had a practice at 5. So like my dad had to leave work early just so I could like get to soccer. And you've had to miss many, many sleepovers. Um, you will go to the party and we'll pick her up or she will have to turn down a birthday invitation um, because she knows she has a big game. And we have to turn down a lot of family functions and show up late. Her closest friends are on the team, mm -hmm. so we're, uh, we're really lucky and she's really lucky that way. And it's not like her closest friends are telling her, oh, you know, skip soccer, come here and do this. We're gonna go hang out at the mall or whatever, you know. It, they're, they're all in the same boat. They get her drive, they get her motivation. They understand uh, the commitment that she has to the team. OPDL is, is more than just a league. It's also the first time Ontario's had a performance standards-based league. So it really impacts the club, not just with those 2001 through 2003 age groups, but also from our grassroots levels. Our OPDL commitment is anywhere from four to five times per week. You know, there are times that we have in-class tactical sessions as well in preparation for game day, so the commitment is big. It's definitely, you know, something that players have to come in with the open mindset to, to spend a lot of time with us. One of the ways that the Bayhawks support parents and players wanting to get into the OPDL program is working with them in terms of information and communications. So we've been blessed with really good coaches. Excellent manager. Yeah, you know, like Lynn is, Lynn is uh, incredible. You know, both Kim and I have managed in the past for uh, our middle daughter's team and uh, we kind of aspire to be like her. I started uh, just trying to help to help and make sure the kids are taken care of and are having good memories to carry on when they grow up. Some of the girls I've had for a few years, um, so of course I know they're more comfortable with me. Uh, some of them call me their soccer mom. <laughs> Her coach uh, has a 24-hour rule, so um, after a game, if Alyssa's played incredible, uh, we will praise her, high five, we reward her. It's a tough league to begin and um, we realize it's, it's a lot of dedication on her part. If she doesn't play as well, I just don't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> that's how girls. that's how I always know when I don't play well because in the car it's like dead silent. <laughs> You know, we get into it probably more than I should and when they're in there because it's, uh, you know, feel pressure for them whether uh, they're going to play well or not.
played a hard game and, uh, against a tough team. And this team will bounce back. Just that they, they'll learn from their mistakes. They'll watch the video. They'll, they'll improve. They, uh, and they won't let this get to them. It's, they'll, they're just they'll be not used to it. So, uh, but uh, they're a classy team. They'll, uh, very classy team. Very uh, proud of them one way or the other. Yeah. We'll celebrate. We'll go to Starbucks. She'll still get her drink. <laughs> Well, my main goal is probably to get a scholarship in the States. Like, I've always wanted to go to the States and, like, play soccer there. And so that would probably be my main goal. And then, like, of course, Team Canada would be great. But, like, realistically, um, I'm just hoping for a scholarship, so. It's, uh, it's a really family thing. And it's good for us because we spend so much time together that we probably might not if she wasn't involved in this. My hopes and dreams for Alyssa is for her to be happy. For her to continue to love soccer, to want to go to soccer. She always wants to go to every practice and every game. She looks forward to it. Um, she has excellent coaches. She has an excellent manager, amazing families and, and, and great friends on the team. There's a lot of sacrifices, but there's not one day that we wake up and we regret it.